think the last time we did this. You're real! I am! You're here too! And they're magnificent. <laughs> Terry. It's been a long time. It's been a long time since I've seen you in person. I know. It's because we're busy. We're so busy. We're such people in demand. And uh, I was in a Turkish prison for two months. I know. Luckily, I was able to get you bail. Thank you. Christian bail. What is a trigger? <laughs> Christian bail. <laughs> hey, we're shooting this episode. It's summertime. Some, some, summertime. It's a gorgeous day outside. Uh, <laughs> so we decided to come inside and shoot so episodes. Yeah, we're inside like fools. There's barbecue waiting for us and beer and cigars and everything. So this episode will be ten minutes long. Okay, we gotta go. Yeah. Because it's summertime, we have a great time. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Dude, have you heard the Mandela effect? The Mandela effect? No. You haven't heard? But oh my god. Go down this rabbit hole where they say there's been a rift in time and space. And things that you remember have are changing daily. So there, are, if you go on uh, YouTube and just put in Mandela Effect, they'll show you these examples of logos, things. We need a bigger boat is no longer said in Jaws. First of all, it's you're going to need a bigger boat. I think they say it's something else now. No, I have them. Dude, I'm telling you, watch Mandela Effect. It'll drive you crazy. There are singers of bands who see their lyrics now and hear them and go, I never sang that. Okay. It goes in with the CERN Super Collider, super, searching for the God Particle and stuff. Kind of cool. I'd be great to know well, if we're well, going for it. after you do that, we're going to be talking about sharks today. <laughs> we're not going to talk about Mandela Effect. Uh, we are in the, the uh, end of July, beginning of August. July, of course, is the month in which Jaws took place. That's right. Fourth of July. And we've got a panic on our hands on the Fourth of July. <laughs> How many times have you seen Jaws? Oh, God. It, 40? Oh, it's got to be in the hundreds. In the hundreds? Yeah. Oh, my God. If you don't count, like, start to finish and just right. like, oh, it's halfway through, I'll just watch the rest of it. I've seen Jaws in its entirety twice. Once when it was in the theater and, like, once on video. I watch it probably at least five times a year. Because like, it's on TV so often. Right. But I also have, like, the super duper restored blu-ray mm -hmm. and so i'll pop that in just I, one of my favorite movies of all time i mean don't get me i love jaws it's just i don't know why it's not something i just turn on all the time I'm, i'll rectify the thing that. about that movie is clearly jaws is the king daddy that we don't really need to talk about jaws that much mm -hmm. for this we're gonna talk about other shark movies but a big one one of the great things about jaws is for its time the shark was amazing it's aged a bit you know but the thing about jaws is the the shark's the least thing you want to see. The character oh, moments no. in that movie are what make it so great. Yeah, well, the dialogue, the... It typically, uh, shark movies don't try to put in that kind of talent <laughs> into yes. a shark movie. Which brings us to the real reason for this episode. It's Sharknado 5. This week, probably by the time I get this edited, it'll be right around the time Sharknado is coming out. Because when I think of high-level A-list talent, I'm thinking the Sharknado franchise. Ian Ziering and Tara Reid <laughs> come pretty much to mind. Now, I'm going to have to rely on you for this, because I saw one, and I was like, well, Mansquito was better than Sharknado, and so it didn't float my boat. I it's saw dumb. the first Sharknado, and then I have sort of watched parts of the other ones. Didn't you go to, like, a Sharknado viewing party once? No. For, I just, like, three? No? No. Never someone else. My friend Nick's place to watch it once, and then <laughs> his direct TV for the last one. Right. He has direct TV, so it started raining really hard, so we didn't see the end of it. <laughs> the end of oh. the, the, end of okay, the third mix? one, I think, is in space. And David Hasselhoff and Ian Ziering are in a spaceship, and there's a giant shark, and then in space coming at them, and then everything crashes, and then Tara Reid gets hit by, like, debris, and then at the end, they like, had you vote, does she live or not? Right. And then in the fourth one, she comes back, spoiler alert, as, like, a cyborg... <laughs> and her father, who's Gary Busey, has like turned her into this, and she has like Iron Man powers. Oh my god! And so it's just that it, might be the one I'll watch and enjoy. Well, that it, sounds so. You dumb. just you're, listen. The Sharknado is the kind of thing that after we do a bunch of these, we're drinking beers. You put that in, and you talk with somebody while you're watching. Right. And you go, ha ha! Look, there's, you know, look. 
We should all cliche. <laughs> we should all appreciate Sharp Nano movies because they keep Tara Reid employed. Because I think if we had like a homeless broke Tara Reid roaming the streets, it'd be kind of dangerous out there in Hollywood. So. Is there anybody who's fallen from grace more than Tara Reid? Uh, Andy Weiner. <laughs> that was maybe that's it. You got to be in New York. Is he Carlos Danger? Yeah. <laughs> Taking nude selfies with his little son in the bed with him. It's so gross. Uh, so anyway, August, shark movies, August 6th, August he's got a shirt. I've got uh, Jason, who was in the water. So, there we go. That comes out August 6th. August 6th. Sci-fi. Sci which I didn't know there was a four, so now I know there's a four with the Tower Green Cyborg. Global Swarming, this one's called. I, I'm in. First, the, the other one's called May the Fourth Be With You. The fact that they can, usually when a franchise goes to space, it's over. The fact that they were like, oh, this is just the middle. Well, sci-fi has just sort of like made its bread and butter the terrible movies mm -hmm. like and, and I, I wonder if kids now are watching sci-fi movies like we watched oh they are feature feature movies and going you know like, like laughable special effects to us back then right were puppets and their hammer universal is sci-fi it's, it's just making this bedrock of just goofy can't be bad ice spiders Speaking of that, I, I've pulled up some shark movies, and there's quite a few of these that I'm sure are sci-fi adventures, like Sharktopus. Sharktopus. Which is the one? And me Mega Shark Shark versus Giant Octopus. That might be the one. There's one that's got um, Tiffany and Debbie Gibson. Oh, I think that one's got a crocodile in it. Right. They have a big fight. <laughs> They didn't have a sing-off? That'd be great if there was like a battle. Yeah, one of those, uh, the giant shark, like it jumps up and grabs a plane. Oh my god. They're it, so bad. Uh, the one I liked, I liked, did you watch uh, Ghost Shark? <laughs> no, I saw part of it. That was, it was a ghost. It was a shark that was a ghost of this invisible shark. And just people would just be cut in half with just awful CGI. Save a budget. <laughs> Two-headed shark attack. Is that Carmen Electra? Uh, look, if I knew this, I'd be really. I'm pretty sure I saw this one. Hold on. And it was like Carmen Electra like came and filmed a few scenes. So there's a lot of scenes of like her by herself sunbathing. You are correct. It is Carmen Electra in a bikini. Wow, that was good, including Brooke Hogan. Yes, Holt's daughter. Uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Nobody else of any merit. And there's a five-headed shark coming out. Oh, boy. Uh, those are the crappy... I mean, there's sand sharks. Mega shark versus mecha shark. Ooh. Pulling on some Godzilla. Godzilla. Mecha Godzilla. So when Jaws came out, the big talk was a movie called Blue Water, White Death. Have you ever heard of that? No. Blue Water, White Death. I have never seen it, but it's available on VOD now. And it looks like... It, when I heard about it, it sounded like it was a fictional movie but the trailer looks like it's a documentary and it looks like shark week before anybody was doing shark week so really these people are diving with the great whites now i don't know if it's like a fictionalized documentary and something happened so i it's i can't believe i've never tracked it down and watched it right so blue water white death is like this legendary movie kind of like when you heard about the last broadcast yeah you know, you're just like oh i heard about this other movie i must find that so blue water white death is on my like to-do list to catch up on uh, you talked about a movie before, Mako, which I remember. Now, I thought Mako, the actor. Remember that guy? He was always no. in Hawaii Five-0. Oh, guy. yeah. Jeez. Starring Mako. Oh, Blue Water, White Death. That's 1971. Yeah. That predates Jaws. Wow. Yeah, so when Jaws came out, everybody said, oh, you got to see Blue Water, White Death. And um, then I watched the trailer. Meanwhile, it's 1975. They go, how? Yeah. <laughs> No, that's exactly it. <laughs> how am I going to find so it? So I recently thought about it, and I looked it up on like Amazon, and it's there, but it's you know, I haven't like pulled the trigger on it because maybe YouTube has like the whole thing. There's there's a trailer. <laughs> yeah, watch the trailer. Uh, okay, I gotta check that out. But I re now Mako, I I vaguely remember Mako. But I so when Mako Mako came out like after Jaws, and I think it might have even been a made for TV movie, or if not, I got it from the video store. But it was like in the wake of. There was a million like creature movies in the vein of Jaws. There was Claws, a bear movie. And there was uh, Octopus or whatever. There was always like... Remember the Bob Hope special, Joys? <laughs> ah, I gotta tell you. 
That joys, eh? Thanks. I, I can't even do that growl he did. I just did a Carol Burnett for Bob Hope. Um, <laughs> do you know Bob Hope is known as the king of orgies in uh, Hollywood? He was a big orgy organizer. He didn't even have a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> So Mako, what's the, what's the subtitle of Mako? It's like oh, um, Jaws of Death or something. Mako, like that. the Jaws of Death, 1976, right after Jaws. So this was, if to my recollection, some guy has some kind of necklace that he can go in the water with the sharks, and uh, he has a mystical connection with sharks, and is given a strange medallion by a shaman. <laughs> It's a 3.4 rating on IMDb, which is usually Richard Jekyll's in it. I freaking love Richard Jekyll. Wow. Uh, and that's about it as far as people you want to talk about. It was, when did Zombie come out? Because Zombie had the other famous shark scene with the shark and the zombie That was fighting. Uh, 79, 80, something like that. That was supposed to be a sequel to Dawn of the Dead. Was it really? In their mind, it was, it, a lot of weird stuff going on in Italy at the time. That's the great. It's a shark versus zombie. It's cool. I think that movie is dreadful. Yes. Uh, the cover with the zombie is cool. It's great on a t-shirt. It's good to have in your video collection. That but one scene is memorable. The rest of the movies. That movie is unbearable. Yet another bad. Italian horror movie that you're like. But I vowed. I on, need a cappuccino to keep me awake. On Final Guys, our other podcast, I vowed I'm going to start watching more Italian films. And I did find one I liked, so... Wish me luck. Instead of closed caption, they just talk with their hands. <laughs> He's saying, "Stop out of it! Somebody left the ravioli on it too long." So as Mako was, you know, an Italian American, I'm offended by that. You should be. I married an Italian. I have Italian children. I can make fun of Italians all day long. Eh. I'm gonna whack you. <laughs> Please do under the table. <laughs> How's that for a topper? Now the movie that came out. I forget when, probably in the 90s, that was like the great hope for the next great shark movie. That turned out to be not the next great shark movie, but the next great laughable shark. Yeah. Is Deep Blue Sea. Deep Blue Sea was terrible. Worth the price of admission to see Saffron Burroughs in her stripped down and then electric I can't believe I didn't shark. think of that. I'm thinking worth price of admission for Samuel Jackson cut short in his little soliloquy. That is classic. Or uh, the LL Cool J song at the end. My head is like a shark's fin. <laughs> now, there's a sequel to that, right? Coming out. Yeah. So it's in it's Deeper in Blue Seer. Yeah, deeper Blue Seer. <laughs> there's, you know, there's a, um, another shark movie. Open Water. You ever see that? I, open Water is really good. Open Water uses real sharks. Yeah. It, yeah, they're not, you know, giant Bruce from Jaws or whatever. Because that's based on a true story. When you saw that movie, now it's a couple in the water, treading water until they eventually get eaten. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, how do they know? Right. <laughs> but I guess they just did like, oh, yeah, this, cu this couple disappeared, and we'll assume they were eaten by sharks, and there we go. Open water, I think, is really good. It's, it's, it's different. It's very scary. Yeah. Because it's got the whole, you know, there's times where they look underwater, and you're like, oh, crap. Yeah, especially when he start, when like they're bleeding, and you're like, "Oh God!" And they're getting cold and tired. You feel it. There's a, there's a part two. There's a part two which I don't think has sharks. I don't remember. If my wife was here, she would know because she watches Open Water and Open Water Two constantly. Really? And the Reef. Well, the, there's an Open Water Three coming out that looks like sharkrific. <laughs> it actually looks like worth watching. Is it a 47 meters down? No, I saw that, and that is stupid. 47 meters down. I, I can't believe you went to the theater to see that. I may or may not have gone to the theater to see that. Oh, all right. You saw it. Well, that was... You it didn't was see available... It. On, it was on demand. Yes. Well before... Yeah, I saw it. theaters. And uh, I think I'm, they wanted to put it out last year, but then The Shallows came out, and they were like, oh, we can't compete with that. So have you seen The Shallows since you saw The Shallows in the theater? I've seen The Shallows five times since then. I feel like that is a movie that ages the worst fast. I don't... I, I don't I, it's one of those ones I can just pop in and watch. I just want to look at Blake Lively for well, a while. Yeah. <laughs> I love the shark. It's so dumb how she said the only way she's going to beat the shark is to dive down to the bottom of the ocean and impale it. 
Like there wasn't a way to do that up on top. Now the shark gets it's all really aggressive. She swims through jellyfish. The shark goes from like looking pretty cool to looking pretty cartoony. Yeah, I, I, I forgive it because I thought it was Look, when your when your options are shark zone, snow shark, Jersey Shore shark attack. Snow shark. The shallows just seems like Citizen Kane of shark movies. Modern day shark movies. Modern day from nineteen eighty on. <laughs> Because it's better than Jaws 2. So yesterday three. they were showing all the Jaws movies and I happened to catch the end of Jaws 2 and then the like end of Jaws 3. So I, I probably watched like a half hour, 45 minutes. Then I went and like did something, came back and I was like, oh, now it's the end of Jaws 3. Right. Oh, God, they're so funny. Like the <laughs> Jaws 2 just is a boring movie. It's so, so long between anything happens. Yeah. And like the shark eats a helicopter at one point. But it never like, just, like gnaw on it. But it waits all movie to like the shark could have eaten the boats that the kids are on right at any point. But it like does. Well, that's all where Brody's kids are driving all the boats are kind of like yeah. Oh okay. And uh, then Jaws three is the one in Sea World with that Lee Gossett Jr. And I love that in the theater. I saw it in three D. Me too. In the theater. And when you watch it now, like you see the like the dragon tongue or the the the. Dolphins, like all the 3D things that are, now you're watching it, it's not in 3D. You're like, oh, they're really trying hard to sell. I it. could see where that was. No, that, um, those were bad. Oh, the Jaws 3 has some great, like the CG shark coming at the window. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, when they're in that like walkway thing? They're in the walkway, but then at the end when the, they're in the control room. Oh, oh, that's and it right. It looks like a submarine coming at them. Right. Yeah. Oh, so good. That was like PG. It was a perfect like matinee movie that we would go to. And me, I'd see it. I was in Florida when weekend. I saw that, so we like went perfect. to the beach the next day. I want to go swimming, mommy. Were you ever afraid of the water because of shark? Of no. Jaws? I actually, I brought a rifle to the beach to play Jaws in the water. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> thank God your dad didn't bring like a tank of gas. That you could I actually blow. took an old, um, an empty blowtorch. Uh, and made it into like an air tank. Like, right. like I painted it yellow, so it looked like an air tank. Oh my god. You are definitely, you are a mega fan oh, yeah. of shark movies. My friend Kevin and I, we talk in Jaws quotes, and the, one of the best days of my life was he took me around Martha's Vineyard to show me places where Jaws was filmed. Right. And so like we're on the bridge where the, the pond and all that. So I'm having these great moments, but the, the best moment was um, when we go to the Chappie Ferry. Chappaquiddick Ferry. Mm -hmm. That's where Brody gets on the boat and the mayor gets on. Right. Like the Boy Scouts are out, are out there. It's this little thing that takes your car from the mainland to Chappaquiddick Island. And it's really not that far at all. It looks further. In you the, didn't drive your girlfriend in her car over there. I saw the bridge where that happened. <laughs> With a boat for Kennedy sticker yeah. on the back. Um, but you're like in this like main part of town and then you just go down this road and like this like around this alley. And all of a sudden, like it's there, it's just like out of nowhere, like. And so we just come around the corner, and suddenly like, he he wa he's watching me, and I just come around the corner. I'm like, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I must get down and bow. And then I'm like, can we go on this? He's like, yeah, I'll take us over to Chapel Quiet. We got, I got, like, I got to get this. <laughs> Fanboying over a location. The wreck of the orca is still on Martha's Vineyard. And we couldn't find it, but he went back another time and he found it. And he goes, we were so close. It was like over oh. on another side of the dune. He says it's all banged up and stuff. Right. I'm like, why isn't that restored in like the first thing you see when you get to Martha's Vineyard? Right. Be, you have to go back there. Let's go back there now. Tow cables. We got nothing. Have you ever seen bait? Yes. See, I knew you did. In 3D. Segwaying. With my favorite, Sharni Vincent. Oh, yeah, isn't she, um, what the hell's that movie? You're next. You're next. Oh, yes. This, another one. Isn't wife, um, Julia McMahon in that? Yes. My wife is somehow into shark movies more than I am, and of all the shark movies, this is the only one we own. This is an Australian movie with sharks in an underwater supermarket. It's so fun. It's a tsunami with sharks. There's, there's, like, people in the supermarket and people in the parking garage, so there's people in the cars, and the cars are watertight. And the, the water's coming up, and they can see the sharks like they're in an aquarium. They're in the aquarium. And yeah. The sharks are outside, and then you know, the, the slow leaks and stuff like that, and they're trying to get out of the shark. It, it's definitely a fun. It's really fun. It's, it's surprisingly 
well, it's Australian. Most Australian movies are better than anything we do here. Um, I will say, we're talking all movies. There's a book over here, Sharkwater Beach, by our good friend Tim Meyer. Sharkwater Beach. Excellent book, you guys. It's from Severed Press. It's in, as you can see, trade paperback, ebook, maybe audio someday, hopefully. Um, that's an excellent book to read. Uh, and I'm reading one, I put it. This is in bookstores everywhere. I love it when like a little tiny kind of like monster book gets in stores. Shark Island. It's uh, by Chris Jameson, who is a, I sort of think, I think he's a bouncer and a bartender or something. Nice. Liquor retailer, hockey team coach, drama teacher. Uh, this is put out by St. Martin's Press, which is, I mean, big time. This is, I'm um, 65 pages in. This is a fun, I can tell where this is going. This is a, a blast. Who else might have a shark book? Uh, oh, me! <laughs> We're actually, we didn't do this episode for me to pimp my crap. We did it because I was wearing the Jaws shirt. There, exactly. So, uh, I have a book that I can't show you, but Jack will put, he'll edit it. Because uh, I don't have the print copy yet. Megalodon in Paradise. Which is it's taking all the Jimmy Buffett stuff in one thing. Vince to the left, Vince to the right. Cheeseburger in Paradise. paradise. This is a, uh, I, it's kind of like my ode to the thing. Oh. So I put people in a remote island in Micronesia, and it's, the, the thing is a shark, but there's also a, a government disease that's spread on the island and stuff. There are drug runners, and there's a megastorm. All of it, just set up to ruin seven people's lives. Sign me up. <laughs> so that's from Severed Press 2, Megalodon and Paradise. Should we do some sort of giveaway or something like that, or contest? Or? We can. How about this? A, the fifth person to uh, comment on YouTube gets a free copy of Megalodon in Paradise. How about that one? Excellent. See so, how easy it is for me to give away your stuff? I know. So simple. An ebook. <laughs> <laughs> but that way, you can be in any country, anywhere, and I can send you a copy of that. Ebook. Plus, I don't have print books to give you right now. Maybe I will by the time this comes out. Ooh. But I'm not sharing yet. <laughs> cool. All right. Is that enough sharks? That's a lot of sharks. Y'all, get ready. Have a Sharknado 5 party. If we missed it, which we naturally did because we made this up right before we hit play on the recorder, <laughs> let us know your favorite shark movies. And uh, and if it's Shark Night, go to hell. Oh, Shark Night. If you watch Shark Night 3D, first of all, you got to watch it just because uh, Sarah Pax in a bikini is worth, and what's her name from American Idol? Uh, Ka oh, Catherine. Ka I know. Catherine McPhee. McPhee Those two in bikinis is worth watching that movie. Yes. There is a rap song, like post credits. Oh, where they rap? Where they rap? I saw that movie in the theater. You did? Oh and my God. we stayed through the credits for some reason, and all of a sudden that comes on, and we were like, "That was better than the movie. <laughs> that is a painful movie." And it then is. that rap happens, you're like, "Okay." Yeah, I said, I, when I saw that rap, I said, well, everybody's high. There's yes. a lot of drugs on this set, boy. All right. Farewell and adieu to you, fair Spanish ladies. Don't go in the water! Or Get out of that boat! See you next time. Bye! On Monster, Monster Sharks. Men.